Hello everyone. This video would focus on graphing cubic equation in vertex form and this is the third part. In this part, the absolute value of A is greater than 1. Before we go farther, please feel free to check out the description box below for the link of the other series of topics related to graphing cubic equation in graphing form or vertex form. Before we jump into this example right here, let's have a review on the basics of cubic equation in vertex form. We remember that the vertex form or the graphing form of a cubic function is given in an equation y equals a quantity x minus h cubed plus k. Now let's look at the effects of the parameters a, h, and k to the graph. So this is the graph of a cubic equation. So we remember that this graph has two tail ends. The other end is pointing upward while the other end is pointing downward. Now we remember that if A is positive, the right end of the graph is facing upward. Now when A is zero, the graph is a horizontal line. Whenever the A is negative, the left tail end of the graph is directed upward. Now, we also remember that this parameter A is called a stretch factor. It causes the graph to be vertically stretched, which, make, which makes it narrower, or it makes the graph horizontally compressed, which makes it wider. Now, we remember that the closer the value of a is to zero, the wider the graph becomes. So if you notice, we started from the negative end or the negative side and we're approaching zero right now, the graph becomes wider and wider to the point that at zero, it becomes a horizontal line. And that is true on the other side as well. So if we start from 10, we go to zero, we're, we're, um, we're making the value of A closer to zero, then the graph becomes wider and wider up to a point that at zero, it becomes a horizontal line. On the contrary, the farther the value of A from zero, then the graph becomes narrower and narrower. So as you can see, it becomes narrower right there. Now, if we start from zero, we go the other way. It becomes narrower and narrower as we go farther from zero. Now, we also remember that the coordinate h, k is the vertex or the locator point of the graph where our h translates the graph left or right while our k translates the graph up or down okay going back to the problem right here our first step is to determine the locator point or the vertex i'm going to go ahead and write it down here we remember that the vertex or locator point is a coordinate h, k. So this represents our h, this represents our k. So we have a negative one right here. The trick to determine the coordinate of the vertex is switch this. So that would be a positive one and positive two. So this is our vertex. Now the second step is to create and complete the table of values. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the table of values down here. Okay, so we are going to place this locator point in the middle and that would be one and two here. So we can go ahead and add more values. So we go up two and then three here. So we go down zero and negative one. So what are we gonna do next is we are going to determine the values for the rest of these blanks. So we're gonna show the work on the side right here. We are gonna start with x is equal to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and show that up here. x is equal to zero. So what we do is we will plug zero into the x here and we solve for y. So our equation would come out y equals two and then we put the zero in there minus one cubed plus two. 
So then again, this becomes zero right here. So this comes out y equals two. Zero minus one is negative one cubed plus two. And then we have um, negative one cubed actually would come out in negative one. So that means negative one cubed means negative one times negative one times negative one three times. So that would be two times negative one plus two. So two times negative one is negative two. And then plus two is zero. So our value down here would be zero. So we're going to put that in here. Now our next step is to plug the value of two into the x and solve for y. I'm going to show the work on the side right here. Our x now is two. So the value that we got when x is 2 is positive 4 because we have 2 minus 1 is 1. And so we go ahead and uh, uh, cube that. So that would be 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And then plus 2, that would be 4. So what we're going to do next is we are going to determine the y when x is negative 1. And when x is 3, I'm going to show the work down here. So please notice that in here we have negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 cubed means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is a negative 8. And so negative 8 times 2 is negative 16 plus 2 is negative 14. So that's how we got the negative 14 right here. And when x is 3, y is 18. So our next step is to sketch the graph. So we start with the vertex. So that would be 1. By the way, the count here is by 2. If you notice, it goes by uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So it counts by 2. So that would be 1. And then it goes to y, which is 2. So this is our first dot right here. When it goes to 2, when x is 2 here, by the way, the uh, x-axis goes by 1 and the y-axis goes by 2. When it goes to 2 on the x, that's going to be 4. So 2, 4. So this is where the dot is going to sit. And whenever it's 3, it's going to go all the way to 18. So that is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So it's going to sit right here. And then we go the other way, which is if it's zeros, it's going to sit on 0. And if it's negative 1, it's going to sit on negative 14. So this is negative 10. It goes by 2, so negative 12, negative 14. So it's going to sit right here. So we're going to sketch the graph of this cubic equation. So this is the graph of this equation that we have right here. Now, please notice that this graph is going to go towards the positive infinity on the x-axis and towards the leftmost side, which is on the negative infinity. And it's going to go up to positive infinity and it's going to go down to positive infinity. This tells us that our domain for this graph would be all real numbers and the range would also be all real numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and write that statement up here. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Again, our first step is to determine the locator point or the vertex. I'm going to go ahead and write it down here. Again, our vertex is HK. This represents the H. This represents the K. We are going to switch. So that would be negative 1 and negative 2. So this is our vertex. The second step is to create and complete the table of values. I'm going to go ahead and draw the table of values down here. Okay, we're going to put in more values here. So this would be 0, this would be 1, this would be negative 2, this would be negative 3. So we're going to determine the rest of the values for y. So I'm going to show the work on the side right here. We're going to start with x is equal to 0. So that would be x is equal to 0. So what we would do is plug this x into the, I mean, this 0 into the x right here. So our equation would come out y equals negative 3, and that would be plus 1 cubed minus 2. We put in the 0 here. So this comes out negative 3 times 0 plus 1 is 1 cubed minus 2. 
1 cubed means 1 times 1 times 1. That would be 1. So negative 3 times 1 minus 2. So this is negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. So the value that we have here is negative 5. Now let's determine the value of y when x is negative 2. So down here, so x equals negative 2. So I'm going to show the work down here. Okay, the value of y when x is negative 2 is positive 1. Now, please notice this very carefully. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 cubed means negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, which gives us a negative 1. And so negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3 minus 2 is positive 1. So what we would do is I'm going to show you the work for the rest of the values here. When x is 1 and x is negative 3, I'm going to show the work down here. So these are the values for the rest of these. Now, please notice this very carefully. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 cubed means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's going to be 3 times. And that gives us negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 3 is a positive 24. Positive 24 minus 2 is 22. So that's how we got these values here. And so the next step that we're going to do is to plot the points of these uh, table. So we're going to start with the vertex negative 1 and negative negative 2. By the way, this y-axis here goes by 2 and the x-axis goes by 1. So negative 1 and then negative 2. So it's going to sit right here. So this is the first dot, which is the vertex. 0 would be a negative 5. So this goes by 2. So 2, 4, 5. So this is where it's going to sit. And then our 1 would be negative 26. So that is 1 right here. So 20, 22, 24, 26. That would be approximately somewhere down here. And then on negative 2, our value is positive 1. So that's going to be in between here. So this is our um, point. And then on negative 3, that's 1, 2, 3. It goes all the way to 22. So it goes by 2. So that would be uh, 20 and 22. So it goes up here. And so we are now going to sketch the graph. Now, please notice that this graph is going to go towards the left side infinitely and towards the right side infinitely. It's going to go up to the positive infinity and it's going to go down towards infinity. And so this tells us that both the domain and range for this would be all real numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. Did you get the same answers as these? Yeah! Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!